but there's more movies that we have uh, early projections uh, for, which was reported in the Hollywood Reporter earlier today. Isn't that right, Culture? Yeah, these numbers are um, are kind of scary for uh, <laughs> for these films. Um, it, it, we, we have we have obviously the Little Mermaid thing we were talking about, but we have this Flash film that's coming up with uh, Ezra Miller playing multiple Flashes, and we also have Disney's uh, Pixar Elemental uh, through their uh, you know obviously Disney. The Flash is going to open to a soft seventy million dollars domestic. Yeah, wow. this is something that Thanos was right, also points out for $1.99. Have you all seen the latest flash tracking, $70 million? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did see that. Thanks for pointing it out. And yeah. Tom, uh, can you bring up the article that uh, is in the private chat here? Yeah, and it's and it's pretty bad. I mean, Elemental is you know, we're talking about Pixar. We're talking about the family animated brand for Disney. We're talking about the one that eclipsed their own animation studios in Pixar. And that film Elemental is paced for 40 million dollars 40 million domestic in the united how States. the mighty have fallen yeah yeah and that is that i just i just want to say right away before we continue that is continuing the tradition of light here which yeah. lost more than a hundred million it's one of the biggest flops of all time this heads straight down that uh, territory. Anyway, carry on with the story. Well, no, and I interestingly enough, and as this this story unfolds, you'll find that both of these films are releasing as as you know each other's counter programming because they both release on June sixteenth, along with some other things that aren't in this article. Uh, I don't believe, like the Blackening, and a couple of other films as well. The th there's not there's not a lot of upside. Uh, for these films releasing against each other. But even if you add them together at the box office, that's only 110, is it, in my math right? $110 million? That's uh, what, what was that, what, 70 plus 40? Is that what you said? 40. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, that's 110 million. last I checked. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty soft, you know, on, on opening weekends for two films. That means the box office overall for that projected weekend, June 16th, is going to be substantially muted. And that's that's going the wrong direction for theaters and for well and for obviously uh, the, you know these studios. Uh, normally, the summer box office when it kicks out a new set of films, it you know you have you have weekend weekend very consistent high end earnings, and this is not going to do that. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of positive spin on the Flash. Uh, for the reasons that Tom has described before, that it's basically the Batman feature. The ba uh, the Batman movie with, you know, the flash and, uh, uh, man of steel, uh, with a female. And I, that, that those, those seem to be consistent descriptions that are accurate. Elemental just has looked bad from day one. And Pixar has pushed away so many people on Disney animation in general, because of their, you know, anti-family messaging in the last few of them and their promotion of things that people don't want to have to explain to their children. So we'll have to see how this goes. Um, I'm I'm still of a mind to say that the leadership at Pixar is lacking. I don't I don't think Pete Doctor ever should have been put in a position of power. And um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Script has some thoughts here, but it this I would is say bad. that this is I'd say a soft opening weekend on a holiday weekend is really really bad. Yeah. It's a holiday weekend coming up. People are going to want to. Do have do stuff during the day, barbecues, celebrations, whatnot, and in the evening go to a movie to have some fun and before they end out their night. Yeah. And yet they're projecting seventy million for a superhero tentpole film that's been in the works for seven and a half years. Actually, it's been in the works almost as long as Midnight Jets has been a been a YouTube channel. Um, that that seems like a very low expectation and uh, something to be very concerned about if you're at the studio. Ed, in my opinion yeah, yeah i have to say i'm i'm surprised that uh, i'm not surprised about elemental not in the slightest because that's a disney brand and it took a long time but the disney brand is now tarnished and if they start now in the second it's going to take them five years to fix it yeah. uh but uh but the flash that it opens to a mere 70 million i'm a little bit surprised by that that tells me that uh, two things have spread far and wide. One, 
James Gunn is rebooting the DC universe anyway. So none of what happens here really matters one way or the other. And two, Ezra Miller. Because outside of those two, ain't no reason why this movie shouldn't at least open to um, to, to the same numbers at, uh, as Marvel's Quantumania and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Unless, of course, you have the, the ripple effects of several bad movies and all the DC chaos. Plenty of things come together there. But still, I'm surprised at such an incredibly soft opening as 70 million. That's got to be bad for the studio because this movie, this this was expensive. Even if they didn't invest in reshooting it uh, with uh, with someone other than Ezra Miller, this is expensive. Well, yeah, I mean, and again, the competition's not very stiff for this weekend. It, it, strangely enough, like I mentioned, the Blackening is coming out. That's the terror horror film that's all black people. Then they make jokes about being black throughout it. And then Asteroid City uh, has limited release um, that weekend as well. Well, that's Wes uh, Anderson. He always has limited releases. Yeah, so I'm looking at that. And, of course, that features Adrian Brody, Tom Hanks, and um, Bill Murray. That's brilliant timing, though, because that's counter-programming yeah. on a weekend where none of the big movies are um, are really anything that evidently has the kind of mass appeal that you'd expect. Counter-programming on such a weekend? I mean, that movie's going to take off yeah, relative I mean, to yeah. expectations. Of course. Well, and again, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, do you want to go see a comedy? All right, well, we'll go see, you know, Asteroid City. Do you want to see a horror film with comedy? Okay, we'll go see The Blackening. Do you want to, you know, do you want to see a, you know, morally questionable Disney animated Pixar film? Okay, go see that. Um, yeah. Or, you know, or the TikTokers do you have been memeing the Wes Anderson bit too. So that might, well, it's been getting a lot into of its weekend. It's been getting a lot of social coverage, and that's and then, what I'm but, saying. Like right. it, that might be why, because I'm like looking at this. I'm like, wow. Even I, knowing what I've known about the Flash for so long, I'm still kind of flabbergasted at a 70 million opening. I thought it'd be bigger than that. Yeah. I wonder if it has something to do with that. Perhaps is that people are expecting this Wes Anderson movie to do a little bit better than they thought. I'm not so sure about Elemental doing 40 million though. That's the one. I bet you the Flash will take 20 million out of that. If I had to guess. It's going to be Flash is going to be closer to 100 million and Elemental will be lucky to bring in about 20. Nobody's going to give a crap about this movie. There's zero buzz for it. When that I saw the trailer, work, yeah. when I what was that? Sorry, script. Oh, sorry. I thought you had a, I thought you took a break there, but yes, I was just saying that seemed like a very plausible trend for the holiday weekend. It's like breaking a hundred million ish. Yeah. I mean, cause I think the Flash will do a little bit better than that. I think they're under, you know, I think they're trying to, uh, I, they're hedging their bets a little bit and it's going to probably do better. Cause we know for a fact with Michael Keaton being in that thing, it's going to make a hundred million probably not. right off the. Top. I don't know that for a fact. I don't know. Cause I everybody who's seeing this movie, even people like Chris Gore are still giving it good, good reviews, even though they can't argue the fact that it's just man of steel with tits and Batman. Yeah. Yeah. But even so, um, how many of the total movie going audience, uh, have that much nostalgia for, for Michael Keaton at this point, how many under the age of 40 grew well, up with Michael Keaton? As that's the Batman? difference here, Andre, you brought up the interesting point. I'm, I'm thinking here is, cause this is a situation where a lot of people who don't give a shit about the previous DC movies, they are interested because of Batman. I've Which a shows, lot of, again, sorry. Ahead which shows how little the studio ever had in the faith of the flash because he's not headlining his own movie. He, he needs other heroes within his universe to help support his debut film. That is a really bad sign for, for your yeah. character. Cause and that's it's a what good I'm thing saying. This is going to be a, cl a closeout essentially. Sorry about that Tom. Go ahead. No, 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 that's fine. But that's my point. Exactly. Is there are people who are going to go see this, who've never seen justice league. who have never seen man of steel and don't give a shit. They're going to see it. Cause they see it as a sequel to Michael Keaton's Batman. But my point is, like, how many uh, who are under the age of 40 care about Michael Keaton's Batman? Remember, go back six, uh, three and a, almost six months when the Super Bowl ad dropped, Andre. It was huge. Batmania all over again for about five minutes. So I have a mm. feeling that we're they're underestimating this just a bit, and they're overestimating Elemental. Because the other point was that I was going to make there was, well, whatever the last movie it was I saw in the theater, uh, 
they had that trailer for Elemental, no response whatsoever. It was before Mario, because I remember it was during the Mario trailer came out right after, come on right after it. And everybody perked up during that. But during the Elemental one, there was no response from the audience. That's amazing. And, and again, I mean, it's it's it when I ever I go into a theater, I always pay attention to who's doing what during the trailers. And, you know, if there's actual laughs and things like that, I make a note of it mentally because it's important to know what the audience response is to, you know, just that limited clip of whatever it is they're trying to sell. And those those previews, they can't they really do get an audience back to a theater to watch another film. Uh, it's the one time you might actually have somebody's undivided attention if you're advertising a film is during those previews. So it's important to know what the audience is thinking. So, yeah. Mr. Chato, we haven't heard from you. Are you surprised by these numbers? Would you have expected them to be higher for either of these movies? Uh, you know what? Um, there are the movies that are exciting people. And the, there's the movies that are not exciting people. Uh, I, I'm a little bit, well, I mean, it's it's a crapshoot, right? Uh, obviously, Mario Brothers excited people. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and we can always go back to Top Gun Maverick. Uh, so the audience is out there. Maybe they're just being way more selective. Uh, movie yeah. watching used to be just Friday night, date night. We're going to go out to the multiplex and go see something and, uh, and, and now movies have gotten way too expensive. So you're also being much more careful with the money that you're spending. Um, yeah. And the fact that we've gone through a real long low point of crappy movies. So combined with higher prices and crappy movies, I'm, you know what, I'm not surprised. And maybe the Ezra effect actually has gotten out there. As you guys have mentioned, maybe, mm -hmm. They find him as an uh, find him an unsavory human being, and don't want to go see his movie. I mean, I'm not going to say I wouldn't laugh if this movie doesn't flop, but uh, the the other side of it is there's going to be a bunch of Snyder freaks who are going to think they did it somehow. Because uh, <laughs> no matter what happens, if it's a hit, they're going to say, "There's the proof! There's the proof! We should stick with the Snyder first." And if it fails, it's like, see, boom, we made sure it failed. Fuck you, James uh, Gunn. Uh, we're, you're still, we're still not talking about an awful lot of people. No, I know. That's the problem here. <laughs> but uh, we are losing culture, speaking of people. And uh, we do have, uh, yeah. I know, uh, 32 Nick, flavors of Nick Weiser's in the house. How are you doing, Nick? It says culture coming in with hot, take, hot with his takes. Uh, yeah, he's got some pretty hot takes sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I don't know if we had any more for culture offhand. Let me see here. I don't know if Six had them ready or not. Who wants to yeah. talk culture? That's Nobody. it for culture. So Nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. Well, a lot of times there's ones that are like for everybody or ones he could help us answer as well. But yeah. Air conditioning question. In this oh, case, no, that, he has to be weaving us. true culture. We think you're plenty interesting as well. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, we, I, 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 believe me. We love you. Oh, boy. Yeah. I love you, too. Uh <laughs> I have to step out, but uh, I will be back on my own channel in a little while. Hopefully, uh, some of y'all will follow over for the Friday pre-flight. And, and then speaking we'll... of working hard on his uh, channel, uh, Mr. Culture. Oh, he's thank good, you, Paul. Good, very good example for someone who is uh, working hard yeah. on making this whole thing work. Well, Culture is that. one of the hardest working, most consummate professional YouTubers I know. Wow. And uh, everyone who hasn't done so already need to head on over to Culture Casino, subscribe to him, and especially pay it, uh, watch his daily uh, news show, <laughs> which is only six fun. minutes long. And that's uh, honestly, that's one of like my main uh, means of research. I invest. Yeah, I uh, and I appreciate that. That's very that's very kind of all of you. Um, anyway, I will see you all soon, hopefully, and love you all. Have a great day, everybody, and don't go anywhere. There, you got more stuff to talk about that I wish I was going to get to. I got to see you. Bye. Take care, culture. Take Bye, care, culture. And I want to mention one thing about Elemental, and I don't know whether it was done on purpose or whether this was subliminal. But if you take a look at their logo, it looks like uh, very rainbow. Yeah, well, they got a mix in there. Of course, the uh, Elemental also has our uh, environmental messaging in it, too, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, you have all the ESGs in there. ESGs so in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have some rainbows. You're going to have some environment. You're going to have all yeah. of that. Of course, we can't have well, Pixar. Obviously, 
rainbows. Let's be real. The, the whole movie is predicated on this relationship that is clearly an allegory for a mixed relationship. Well, it, well, it no, but it's 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 Romeo and Juliet. Is it though, Paul? <laughs> is it really? Sure, they're they're all Romeo and Juliet. Essentially, yeah. No, anything that's considered forbidden uh -huh. love, it stems from Romeo and Juliet, which stems earlier from Pyramus and Thisbe. Well, my point is, is that they're trying to imply that you know it's still forbidden. It's like no, it's not. It's not as forbidden well, as you. When act. fire and water get together, they create steam and both die. So that's yeah. the forbidden. <laughs> well, people in the ouch. chat get what I'm saying. Ouch. ouch. This clip was taken from Midnight's Edge in the morning, which streams live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time on the Midnight's Edge main channel. There, you can send in your live questions and comments before clips and full stream replays are uploaded to Midnight's Edge live archives. We are also on Twitter, Rumble, Odyssey, and Facebook, so smash that like, help share, subscribe, and join us.